It's true, the game ain't like it used to be. It seems players these days don't have the same chutzpah they used to. And we all know there are moments in every sport that are exciting. Whether it's a buzzer-beating three-pointer or a walk-off grand slam. Sports are designed to entertain. But sometimes there's an occasion in sports so spectacular that it transcends competition and becomes a cultural touchstone. A moment of such magnitude that people remember where they were, who they were sitting beside, the type of beer that helped create the magic, and the stories they tell never die. Just, he's waving at the ball like a madman. Yeah, get over! Get over! Get over! And then it hits a foul pole! I'm your announcer, Nostalgic Nick, for Do You Remember? And today we're going to be looking at some of the most momentous sports events from the 1970s. Be sure to use your giant foam finger to click the thumbs up button for us. And subscribe to our channel to avoid being tossed from the contest. But for now, let the games begin. Nadia Komenich. Perfection is something we all strive for in life, but rarely achieve. No matter how hard we try, being perfect is inevitably just beyond our grasp. Unless you're 14-year-old Nadia Komenich at the 1976 Olympics, of course. Gymnastics had been an Olympic sport since the games were reconstituted in 1896, with women allowed to compete since 1936. And yet, no one had ever scored a perfect 10 until Komenich walked into the gym as a precocious teenager. So I just went to do whatever I planned to do and whatever I trained to do. Combining superb agility with an unheard of technical ability, she personified grace and blew the competition away by attaining not one, not two, not three, but seven perfect tens at the games. In doing so, Komenich became the youngest ever all-around gymnastics gold medal winner, a record that will never be broken due to the minimum age being raised from 14 to 16. This was true perfection that we can all aspire to. The Immaculate Reception Let me set the stage. The 1972 playoffs. Your team, the Steelers, are down by one. 22 seconds left. Fourth and ten from your own 40-yard line. You need to somehow get 60 yards in roughly the time it takes to wash your hands properly. It's hopeless, right? Well, what came next was a play so improbable, so unbelievable, that it was named after the most miraculous event of all time. Steelers quarterback Terry Bradshaw received the hike and looked downfield. With no receivers open, he was forced to scramble and somehow eluded an almost sure tackle. With the defense closing in, he desperately heaved towards his not-so-open halfback. The ball flew 20 yards before bouncing off the helmet of a defender and flying backwards off-screen for TV viewers. It's broken up, it's game over! Except the ball had serendipitously bounced 15 yards directly into the man of the year Franco Harris's grasp, who dashed upfield to score the winning touchdown as time expired. Truly an immaculate reception. Let's watch one this million again. To one odds on this one. Although Pittsburgh would lose their next game to the undefeated Dolphins, the catch would spur the Steelers on to winning four of the next six Super Bowls, cementing their legacy as one of the NFL's greatest dynasties. Hank Aaron breaks home run record. In 1974, there was no sports record more celebrated than the all-time home runs record. Babe Ruth, an outsized legend both on and off the field, had retired in 1935 with 714 home runs, an astounding 336 more than his closest competitor. In the years since, no one had come close to Ruth's total, with only Willie Mays even breaking 600. But by the end of the 1973 season, Hank Aaron of the Atlanta Braves had whacked 713, making the record falling an inevitability. That year, Aaron received more mail than anyone in the country except politicians. Much of it racist hate mail not wanting a black man to break the most hallowed record in sports. But most of the country rallied around him, with Ruth's own widow stating that her husband would have loved to have Aaron break the mark. And on April 8, 1974, with the eyes of a nation on him, Aaron did just that. In front of 53,000 lucky spectators, Hammer and Hank smacked a fly ball to left field that landed in the Braves' bullpen and calmly trotted around the bases and into the list of baseball's all-time greats. Thrilla in Manila 
By 1975, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, two of the greatest boxers to ever grace the ring, had fought two times, each winning once. And so, when they agreed to a rubber match in Manila, capital of the Philippines, the world waited with bated breath. The bout's name came from Ali's strategy of trying to make his opponent mad. He labeled Frazier a gorilla and incessantly repeated the mantra. There will be a killer and a thriller and a killer when I get the gorilla in Manila. The conditions of the fight were brutal. By the time of the opening bell, the temperature was 120 degrees, with Ali estimating that he lost five pounds during the bout due to dehydration. And the fight itself, watched by over a billion people worldwide, was equally brutal, more than living up to its billing. The fighters pummeled each other mercilessly, with Ali gunning for the face while Frazier went for the body blows. By the end of the 14th round, both men were on their last legs. Ali was moments away from cutting off his gloves when Frazier's trainer threw in the towel. Ali emerged victorious, but described the fight as, quote, the closest to dying he'd ever been. Battle of the Sexes in 1973, women's tennis was in a state of disarray. The players were vastly underpaid compared to their male counterparts, and were looked down on as inferior athletes. It didn't help that noted male chauvinist and detractor of the women's game Bobby Riggs had defeated Margaret Court in straight sets during an exhibition match. 55-year-old Riggs used his victory to trumpet that women were second class athletically and landed on the covers of Time and Sports Illustrated. Then Billie Jean King stepped in. The previous year's number one female player, Jean King agreed to play Riggs in a best of five match for a purse worth $100,000. In the first set, she initially fell behind 3-2 before realizing, as she put it, that she, quote, had to win, given the importance of the match. Billie Jean dug deep, came back and won 6-4, 6-3, 6-3, in a match in which Riggs was only mildly competitive. While equality was certainly not achieved that day, Billie Jean King struck a blow against the patriarchy, proving that women are just as skilled as men. Fisk pushes home run fair. At some level, we all think we can influence events just by wishing really hard. If we just hope or pray strongly enough, we can achieve our desired outcome. But unlike the rest of us, in 1975, Carlton Fisk did just that. It was the bottom of the 12th inning in Game 6 of the ALCS, when Red Sox catcher Fisk stepped to the plate with a trip to the World Series on the line. Fisk hit a long fly ball to left field that looked like it might be going foul. Back then, camera operators were instructed to follow the trajectory of the ball. But fortunately, that day, the cameraman was distracted by a rat, lost sight of the ball, and zoomed in on Fisk instead. Fisk, halfway to first base, was jumping in the air while feverishly waving the ball fair. And if by positive visualization alone, the ball clanged off the foul pole for a home run, thereby forcing a pivotal game seven. He waits to see it. Get over, get over. <laughs> He knew it, there it is. Although the Red Sox would lose that next game and be forced to wait another 29 years to taste the World Series success, Fisk willing that ball fair has gone down as one of baseball's most iconic moments. Jenner wins gold. While every event at the Olympics takes immense physical skill, it's the decathlon where athletic ability is tested the most, the winner of which can safely be described as the best athlete in the world. Participants compete in events as varied as javelin, pole vault, and hurdles, pushing the human body to its physical limit. And at the height of the Cold War in 1976, the best of the best was an American named Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce. The Soviet Union had won the previously American-dominated event in 1972 and spent the next four years proclaiming the physical prowess of their people. But then came Jenner, who destroyed the event like no one before. In front of a worldwide TV audience, Jenner found a hidden fount of energy and sprinted the last lap of the final event, the 1500-meter race, setting a world record in the process. She then ran to the crowd and draped herself in the American flag for the victory lap. Starting a tradition that lives to this day, Jenner returned to the U.S. a national hero, a symbol of American exceptionalism during the dark days of the Cold War. 
Ooh-wee. Talk about some all-inspiring sports moments. Were you lucky enough to see any of these live? What are some of your personal favorite sports moments from the 1970s? Let us know in the comments below, because these events live on as long as we keep telling their story. If you enjoyed this lineup, please give our highlight reel a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the post-game show.